Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can interact with the program we have implemented from the front end side. We have provided you a template again. You are highly encouraged to use that. The moment you install it in your local with Git clone, you should do an npm install so that the required libraries are going to be installed. So let's take a look at what we have downloaded in our template. Here we have a Next.js app with TypeScript, which is a fairly simple single page application. In the index, it's going to show a form which is responsible for showing and creating the title, description, and rating. You don't need to be worrying about how to pass data through TypeScript since we are going to be solely going to focus on Solana and how to interact with it. We don't want you to lose any time with front end part. We are just going to do what is actually specific to Solana's case and our smart contract case. While doing so, I have implemented some parts of the Web3 logic inside this template. Let me show you through them. This app bar and form and review card, as I mentioned, these are all front-end components. So this is going to show title, description, and rating, for instance. The form is going to show them and make the user be able to edit them. And also in the app bar, we are just going to show a wallet button, which is already implemented. How we are implementing is that in the app DSX, we have the components and page props. This is by default. But we are creating a wallet context provider, which is actually provided by Solana. This is going to probably going to stay the same in all of your Solana front-end projects. You don't need to be worrying about this error, by the way. This is not being updated because I'm sure that Solana wallet adapter wallets is installed from package GSA. What we need to take a look at in here is that we are creating a wallet context so that our application will be accessing the wallet throughout all components and all pages. In here, we are just creating a endpoint to DevNet followed by wallet. So we can use Phantom Wallet and Soulflare Wallet. So in case you don't have one, you should be downloading one and creating an account. After that, we are just going to wrap our all application. This children is going to represent the React nodes of our application. And this is going to be wrapping our application basically with connection and wallet. Connection is, as I mentioned, is to DevNet and wallets are these two. With this, we are actually connected to the wallet. Since this is a TypeScript document, we need to define the review. This restaurant review, as we have known, is going to have title, rating, and description with their own constructor so that we can create an object on it. What is actually specific for our smart contract is these lines in the review.ts. This is a Borsch struct. So as you remember, Borsch is what we use to serialize and deserialize data in the Rust program. This is actually creating a variant along with title, rating, and description. So as you remember, in our instructions, we are getting a variant. So in case it's zero, we are creating a review. And in case it's one, we are updating a review. So we are just creating variants for that. And for the update, we are actually creating another schema, which is the only difference is initialized instead of variant, because we need to send initialize along with our data as well. And we have our own TypeScript code for serializing and deserializing. So we don't want you to worry about these parts because this is going to be pretty common in rest of the applications. This variant zero is important, by the way, since this is our variant to create a review. And also this buffer that alloc this allocates memory, uh, which is 1000, because this is what we have defined in our program as well. Other than that, you don't need to be worrying about this part. So this part may look a bit complex, but this is provided in the template. What we need to do is we need to implement some logic on our own. We are going to go to index. In here, in the template, you have my own program ID. You can interact with it uh, as much as you want. But since you are going to be using your own program, you need to be actually changing this line. To your own program ID, which we get from Solana Playground in the previous video. Let's start to look at this part. So it's going to show an app bar along with a review form. So this is the form that handles the user inputs. And then it's going to show the reviews. But right now we are not actually fetching the reviews. We don't have the handle submit or handle transaction submit in this case. In this video, we are actually going to implement those. Let's start with, in the first line, actually, let's create a connection since it's going to be required when we are trying to send a transaction. So let's create it by new web three dot connection. And inside we are just going to give DevNet as cluster API URL. In here we can just use all of the available strings, but in our case it's them. Since we are going to fetch some accounts, sign a transaction, we need to get our wallet. For that, we are going to use 
use wallet hook, which is provided by Solana wallet adapter. From this use wallet, we are going to use two variables. First one is public key, and the second one is send transaction. So the send transaction is actually a function. Once we have the required data, we are going to call the send transaction. The first thing we need to do is modify this use effect. So it's going to be rendered when the application is first loaded. First thing we need to do is actually fetch account. For fetching account, we have a util folder. Inside it contains fetch reviews. It gets program ID along with a connection that we have actually at this point. Based on this input, it's going to get accounts from get program account. And it's just going to map this account to account public key, deserialize the data so that it's going to be in a human readable form. Since this is already implemented in the template, you don't need to be doing anything on this. We can just close call this function in our use effect so that when the application is loaded, we are going to see our reviews. So maybe you have noticed, but it's an async function. So we need to use await. After the await, we are actually going to call this patch reviews. So review program ID, we have it in here. And this connection is something we have just implemented. We can use this structure to set the reviews to our reviews use state. And this use effect is going to kick off when the application is rendered. This fetch account is going to be called when the use effect is called. Underneath our form, we have a handle submit. It's going to create a review based on the data we have at this point, but we don't have the handle transaction submit. So we need to actually work on that. The signature is already ready. Let's start with the first check, which is public key. So in case the wallet is not connected, we cannot actually send a transaction. So let's give an alert to please connect wallet. Then we need to return because in case there is no wallet connection, we cannot do anything. But in case there is, we can just create a buffer from review.serialize. So it's going to, as I said, make the data we have into a blockchain storable mode. So it's going to serialize it. We are going to create a transaction from it. Create an empty transaction. Then we are going to fill in the detail. So for that, new Web3 transaction. Then we need to get the PDA from our review program ID and review title as what we have done in the program as well. We have three dot public key, find program address link. Inside it's going to get seeds and program ID, just like what we have done in our program as seeds. Let's give public key dot to buffer and buffer from our review title, since it's the unique identifier of our restaurant review. This is the seeds, so we need the public key as well, public key of the review program. So the public key is going to get from review program. And with this, we will have a PDA. We need to actually send the required account with this transaction. So let's actually create that in our instruction. Let's create a new Web3 transaction instruction. This will actually called all of the transactions that is required by the entry point. As you remember, we need a data. The data we have is the data buffer in serialized form. Program ID is public key from our review program ID. And then the complicated one is the keys. These are the accounts that is interacted with in this transaction. We need our own public key. So is signer is true because we are the one signing it and is writable is false because we are not a smart contract based. Also, we need to give the PDA. So the public key is PDA. So is signer is false. And is writable is true in this case because it's going to have its data modified. And then we need to give system program as our third data. For that, another object. So the public key is web3. System program dot program ID, and it's not a signer or it's not right also. So with this we have the instruction. So we need to add this instruction to our transaction. We have created an empty one, so let's add it. Transaction dot add this instruction, and now we have a transaction. So let's send it with the import we had. Let's wrap this in a try catch block since we don't know the response to this. And in case there's an error, let's console log the error. Uh, 
point, we can just use an alert also with json.stringify so that it will be more readable. Also, we can do the same in console log as well. What we are going to try is we are going to try a transaction. Transaction ID is going to be equal to send transaction. So the send transaction, as you remember, is what we have from use wallet. And this send transaction is going to look for transaction and connection. So the transaction with the same name, what we have, and connection also. We have a TX ID actually as our state. We are just printing out the transaction ID with Explorer link get that part as well. So we are going to set the transaction ID to a string called transaction submitted. And we are going to have our own HTTPS explorer.solana.com slash tx. So this is the actual transaction URL from the Explorer. And the URL is also looking for cluster, which is devnet. And this all looks good. Maybe the link is wrong, but we will fix it when we get it working. But with this, actually, we are ready to test it. So we can run our front-end program.